All right, today I'm reassembling the steering gear box. I got the steering gear cover back from the machine shop. I had to have them uh, ream the bushing that I put in because my hand reamers won't go in there properly. Um, but I got that back, it's ready to go. Uh, I painted it. So this is POR15, P-O-R-1-5. Um, a really great restoration paint, really heavy duty. Um, I got to clean up where it dripped over the edge because it is pretty thick stuff. It dries on like, I don't know, like a coat of plastic. It's crazy. Um, but I got to scrape that off before I put it on. Otherwise, the gasket might not sit. So I'll be doing that. Um, not a paid promotion or anything. I'm just a fan of the product. And if there's something good that I like, I like to tell the people about it. Uh, so here's the steering tube. This is the column that goes up into the uh, cab. So down here, I did a video before about removing the mast bearing. This thing comes out pretty easily. So I got a new mast bearing in there. And uh, I just put the worm gear shaft back through. So that connects down to here. All right, so here's your worm gear. I put the new bearings in there. Um, you can see there, I got these new bearings on there. Um, that green stuff is a special kind of grease they tell you to use. Um, I was putting gear oil in the steering box, which I later found out you shouldn't do because it's not meant to hold oil. It leaks out immediately, no matter how good your seals are. Um, so in reading the manual and checking online, the consensus seems to be using um, this John Deere cornhead grease. It's a number, what's it called? Number zero. Grade zero, grade number zero grease. Um, they call it grade zero in the shop manual. But basically it's like a, it looks like grease, but it's self leveling, which means it doesn't, it'll flow back down and settle after a while. So it's, uh, it's not quite like grease where it's just all gonna stick to the sides and get pushed out of the gears. It, it'll go back in and it's, uh, good for a wide range of temperatures and it keeps its consistency. So that's what everybody on the stove ball site said to use. And somebody mentioned that it takes, the steering box takes about, I don't know, three or four tubes of that stuff. So I got a few tubes of it. Um, yeah, so I just uh, I slid this in. It's just kind of resting in there. And then the next step is I gotta put my gasket on and lift that whole unit into here and bolt it into place. So I'll do that now. Okay, so I've got the steering mast back attached to the box with some nice new stainless steel bolts. Didn't tighten it down all the way yet. And I got my new gasket. I put a little bit of grease on the gasket to help hold it in place because I did have to kind of lift the shaft while holding the uh, steering shaft in place because that's kind of loose in there right that'll just fall out um, wasn't too hard I got it clamped in a vise um, remember to make sure that the horn wire is on the bottom right because when this is hanging out uh, under the shit under the dash you want the horn wire on the bottom to come up make sure you don't snag the steering wheel shaft on the horn wire as it goes in because this does get pushed back in once you're once you're done. Okay, so now you got the worm adjuster. It's this big threaded cap with a lock nut on it, right? And then there's the other worm gear goes in, uh, not worm gear, the other worm bearing goes in here. And, and then that rides in the end of the worm shaft like that and then it threads into the housing. And you're gonna wanna, it's two-handed job, so you're gonna wanna like lift up the shaft a little bit and wiggle it around, get it centered. Make sure that the same bearing that's on the inside of the cover is seated, and then screw it in. And start, just get it started to hold it in place. I'm gonna pause now and come back to it. All right, I got the mast bearings in. Um, I mean, the worm gear bearings. 
and um, one thing you want to make sure of is that they stay flush. So the first time, uh, I don't know if you can see that, it's nice and flush inside the case. And then what happened was when I was putting the cap on, I let it wiggle around too much. You can't really see it now, but it kind of got cocked in the, in the cap. So what helped was kind of putting the bearing up against the end of the worm gear and then turning it and keeping pressure so it didn't allow it to turn inside the case. And then you just kind of crank it down until it stops uh, gently by hand because uh, you do have to go and adjust it later on using a scale and uh, you, you set the preload and all that. So I'm going to move on to getting the side cover on and the um, uh, Pittman arm shaft. It's got to mesh up with that gear in there. What they have you do is they have you center it, center this gear in the case, and then get everything lined up. So I'm going to go through the manual and see. The rebuild kit came with a manual, which is nice. Um, in case you don't have the shop manual, but I think, yeah, all the all the directions in here are right out of the the uh, main shop manual. But it is nice to have a second you know, second copy. So pausing and I'll be back.